so I got the new Apple Vision Pro and as a tech nerd I was looking forward to it because of all the cool functionalities and everything that it has but as a space nerd one of the things I was most looking forward to was trying out the new planetarium apps there's a couple of them fun story I actually went to the launch event on Fifth Avenue in New York City I flew in from Switzerland the day before and so I was super jet lagged it was very easy for me to get up and go to the launch event super early I was quite at the front of the queue. I got in to try out and do the demo as one of the first people. Um, so I got a bunch of photos taken of me and somehow I ended up on Tim Cook's page, Apple's homepage on apple.com. I ended up in a number of news outlets. Uh, I did an interview with Bloomberg, the actual New York Post with me in it. I'm somehow on the Sunday Times. It is very funny because I was not expecting any of that to happen, but here we are and I'm very excited to actually show you and, and, and try out the, the new planetarium app. The one that I've downloaded is called Sky Guide and I also got the pro version of it, which costs I think $40 a year. Um, but for now, I'm actually in the 14 day of trial period, so I haven't paid anything yet. So let's get into it. You can have these like different scenes where, where you want to be if you don't want to see your actual environment, which I don't want to show you because I'm literally doing this in my hotel room in a tiny space. So I'm actually on the moon and it is 360 unless I go too close to the wall and then it kind of protects you from, from doing that. Um, so I am on the moon and I can choose what app I want, obviously I want Sky Guide. The first thing you do is select what environment you want to be in. I think the, the ocean is the best, I really like it because you have the best visibility. So I'm actually gonna turn off the music. It comes with music, but I feel like that's not gonna be helpful here. There's also ambient noise, depending on what environment you're in. I'm gonna turn those off. And here we are. So the way this works is it takes your geographical location um, by default and it shows you exactly what constellations and, and whatever objects, so the exact sky that you would see on the sky right now. I'm in New York City, so I know if I, if I went outside, I would see approximately one star or maybe not even, I would see Jupiter. Um, but this is what the night sky would look like if I was able to see it, so it's really cool. And actually it uses the compass of the Vision Pro, so it knows what direction you're looking in. And this is something I haven't quite made up my mind of, whether I like it or not, is that you can't rotate the sky around you, so if you want to see what is behind you, you physically have to turn and that is something that makes it much more realistic but it's also kind of annoying because i mean it is virtual i feel like you should be able to like like turn it around and then you have a bunch of options here you can for example take any given part of the sky that you that you want to look at and you can zoom in using the regular like uh, pinch motion that you use to control the device. So for example, I see the Pleiades star cluster up there. I can just zoom in and these are my binoculars. I can decide how much I want to zoom in. You can zoom in quite a lot, but while you want to search for something, maybe you just do a little bit and then you can zoom in pretty much as, as much as you like. Obviously, the more you zoom in, the, the more unstable it becomes. As such, it is quite like real binoculars. And then you can zoom back out. You can also kind of grab the constellations, like there's Taurus here for, for no reason whatsoever. And then you can drop it back up. You can do this with all the constellations. Um, what else do we have? There's Leo. You can take it off. I don't know. I don't know why, but it, it is quite fun. I feel like I'm gonna turn off these constellations because I they're, they're quite annoying. I'm gonna turn off mythology. Um, let's have a look at something else. It is quite realistic as to what you can see with the naked eye because it's only a couple deep sky objects that you can really see. Um, there's the Pleiades. By the way, I can, I can 
point it out with the laser, right? Oops, how do I do it? I can select the laser and I can show you that's where the Pleiades star cluster is. And so in addition to that, there's only a couple deep sky objects that are naked eye visible. I can see the Orion Nebula right there. I can also zoom in on that. And then it becomes like a whole other thing. I mean, obviously this is nothing like watching them through actual binoculars because you can see the colors. It looks more like EAA or, or, or photography. You can see the Witch Head Nebula. You can see the Orion, the Running Man, the Horse Head, the Flame. There's the Barnard's Loop. Um, and you can see all the other stuff. There's the Rosette, there's uh, the Christmas tree. I mean, you can see everything. Um, I think it's really cool. Oh, I stumbled upon M33 with my binoculars just by accident. And so there should also be, yep, yeah, I have M31. I'm going to try to zoom in a bit more. I'm trying to keep my head still. I feel like if you don't have a very steady head, this is a nauseating experience. Ooh. I feel like there should be a tripod mode where it holds it still because it, it is it is disturbing. Let's zoom out. I don't need that. Um, and then I mean, looking is just one thing, but the cool thing is that there's actually a whole catalog of things that you can look up. So for example, let's go into the Messier catalog, find something that is up right now, like Bode's Galaxy. Um, it, it is a good time to observe it. It gives you some information about it. And then the cool thing is that you can do find it. And then instead of it just pointing it out to you, it shows you in the sky where to look for it. So you can kind of learn where it is in the sky and that it, it points out that it is right there. Obviously I can't see it, but if I zoom in, I can see it. And by the way, I can also see the cigar galaxy next to it. And I can zoom in as much as I like. Ooh, and you can almost kind of see some of the IFN next to it. Really cool. You may have noticed that there's some shooting stars every once in a while. You can also adjust how you want those to be. There's meteor rate. You can choose none. This is realistic as um, this is what it should look like if you're under really dark skies. Or you can do the storm or the intense storm. That is really funny if I select intense storm. I mean, this looks cool and apocalyptic really cool but i'm gonna go back to realistic here one thing that you cannot get any other way even if you go under dark skies is skies that you don't see from home so right now it is using my location but i can actually use any other location that i want so actually i want to say well i want to see something I've never seen before, so I'm gonna go down to Chile. Oh yeah, I tried this before, so I am in Chile here if I choose my preferred location. And it immediately updated the map. I mean, I can see a completely different sky. I'm still looking at north as before, but now towards north I see um, Gemini, I see Orion upside down um, compared to what I'm used to. I see Taurus upside down compared to what I'm used to. It is really funny to see Auriga so far to the north. And then I can actually turn around, look to the south, and see all this stuff that I've never before seen in my life because I've never been stargazing in the southern hemisphere. I can see the large Magellanic Cloud. There's the Tarantula Nebula in it. There should be the small cloud, but if I zoom out, somewhere near it, I think. Oh well. Oh, I see what looks like a slow moving satellite or is it the ISS? I will never know because it doesn't tell me. I, I feel like there should be an option to like ask the app what you're looking at. I'm sure they're gonna add it in the future. And then right overhead, I have the, the Milky Way. I have all these 
constellations and all these nebulas that I've never seen before in my life. I think that's there's the Southern Cross that must be Ada Carinae, that one, and then so that would make this the running chicken. I mean, to, to travel virtually to a Southern Hemisphere place, it is priceless. And since this is such an immersive experience, it is hard to describe this sensation that it gives you because I mean, I am constantly talking, so of course I remember that I'm recording this in a hotel room, but it kind of really makes you forget about where you are. And it just gives you this real immersive experience of looking at the stars. I'm not saying it looks like reality because um, it doesn't convince me that it looks like reality because uh, it, it, it never looks like this, but it is as close as you can get with a virtual device. It is like being in a planetarium 100%. And so I think that is really cool. What is really enjoyable is obviously works in all the directions. So you can wear these goggles, lay down on the bed and really just look up at the sky from the comfort of your home, which is really nice. And it is just a new type of interaction with these planetarium apps, which uh, I'm sure many of us use those before on our phones or on the computer. Like I tend to use Sky Safari. I know a lot of people use Stellarium, but it is just such a natural feeling, almost an organic way to interact with this virtual environment that it just makes it all the more immersive. And it can also be a very educational experience because it really helps you understand where to look for um, for the specific objects that you're you're interested in so yeah i think it is a really cool device so i think if you get a chance to try it out um, definitely do it they do uh, demos at the apple store if you just walk in they let you do like a 15 minute session uh, where they let you try out a bunch of options unfortunately the planetary maps are not installed on those devices so that is not something you get to try out um, but you get to have the experience anyway. If you have the chance to actually try out the planetarium, it is such a fun thing to do. So I think you should do that.